Shwedagon Pagoda in Yangon, Rangoon, Myanmar, formerly Burma. The Shwedagon Pagoda, officially named Shwedagon Zedi Da and also known as the Great Dagon Pagoda and the Golden Pagoda, is a gilded stupa located in Yangon, Myanmar. The 326 foot pagoda is situated on Singh Guttara Hill, to the west of Kandagai Lake, and dominates the Yangon skyline. Shwedagon Pagoda is the most sacred Buddhist pagoda in Myanmar, as it is believed to contain relics of the four previous Buddhas of the present Kulpa. These relics include the staff of Kakuzandha, the water filter of Kagamana, a piece of the robe of Kisapa, and eight strands of hair from the head of Gautama. The pagoda is listed on the Yangon City Heritage List. The stupa's plinth is made of bricks covered with gold plates. Above the base are terraces that only monks and other males can access. Next is the bell-shaped part of the stupa. Above that is the turban, then the inverted alms bowl, inverted and upright lotus petals, the banana bud and then the umbrella crown. The crown is tipped with 5,448 diamonds and 2,317 rubies. Immediately before the diamond bud is a flag-shaped vein. The very top the diamond bud is tipped with a 76 carat, 15 grams, diamond. The gold seen on the stupa is made of genuine gold plates, covering the brick structure and attached by traditional rivets. People all over the country, as well as monarchs in its history, have donated gold to the pagoda to maintain it. The practice continues to this day after being started in the 15th century by the Queen Shin Sabu, Binyadao, who gave her weight in gold. There are four entrances, each leading up a flight of steps to the platform on Singh Guttara Hill. A pair of giant leogryphs guards each entrance. The eastern and southern approaches have vendors selling books, good luck charms, images of the Buddha, candles, gold leaf, incense sticks, prayer flags, streamers, miniature umbrellas and flowers. It is customary to circumnavigate Buddhist stupas in a clockwise direction. In accordance with this principle, one may begin at the eastern directional shrine, which houses a statue of Kakuzandha, the first Buddha of the present Kulpa. Next, at the southern directional shrine, is a statue of the second Buddha, Kagamana. Next, at the western directional shrine, is that of the third Buddha, Kasapa. Finally, at the northern directional shrine, is that of the fourth Buddha, Gautama. Historians and archaeologists maintain that the pagoda was built by the Munday people between the 6th and 10th centuries AD. However, according to legend, the Shwedagon Pagoda was constructed more than 2,600 years ago, which would make it the oldest Buddhist stupa in the world. According to tradition, Tapyasa and Balika two merchant brothers from the north of Singh Guttara Hill what is currently Yangon met the Lord Gautama Buddha during his lifetime and received eight of the Buddha's hairs. The brothers returned to Burma and, with the help of the local ruler, King Okalapa, found Singh Guttara Hill where relics of other Buddhas preceding Gautama Buddha had been enshrined. When the king opened the golden casket in which the brothers had carried the hairs, incredible things happened. There was a tumult among men and spirits, rays emitted by the hairs penetrated up to the heavens above and down to hell, the blind beheld objects, the deaf heard sounds, the dumb spoke distinctly, the earth quaked, the winds of the ocean blew. Mount Meru shook, Lightning flashed, gems rained down until they were knee-deep, all trees of the Himalayas, though not in season, bore blossoms and fruit. The stupa fell into disrepair until the 14th century, when King Binyayu rebuilt it to a height of 18 meter. A century later, Queen Binyatha raised its height to 40 meter. She terraced the hill on which it stands, paved the top terrace with flagstones, and assigned land and hereditary slaves for its maintenance. Binyathao yielded up the throne to her son-in-law Damazidi in 1472, retiring to Dagon. 
During her last illness she had her bed placed so that she could look upon the gilded dome of the stupa. The Monday face of the Shwedagon inscription catalogues a list of repairs beginning in 1436 and finishing during Damazidi's reign. By the beginning of the 16th century, Shwedagon Pagoda had become the most famous Buddhist pilgrimage site in Burma. A series of earthquakes during the following centuries caused damage. The worst damage was caused by a 1768 earthquake that brought down the top of the stupa, but King Sinbushin later raised it to its current height of 99 meter. A new crown umbrella was donated by King Mindanmin in 1871 after the annexation of Lower Burma by the British. An earthquake of moderate intensity in October 1970 put the shaft of the crown umbrella visibly out of alignment. A scaffold was erected and extensive repairs were made. From February 22, 2012 to March 7, 2012, devotees celebrated the annual Shwedagon Pagoda Festival for the first time since 1988, when it was banned by the Governing State Law and Order Restoration Council. Celebrations began at the Raha corner of the Pagoda's Yinbian platform, at the Mahapatan and Ongmaya E central platforms on February 22. The Shwedagon Pagoda Festival, which is the largest pagoda festival in the country, begins during the new moon of the month of Taba in the traditional Burmese calendar and continues until the full moon. Most Burmese people are Theravada Buddhists, and many also follow practices which originated in Hindu astrology. Burmese astrology recognizes the seven planets of astrology the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. In addition, it recognizes two other planets, Rahu and Ketu. All the Burmese names of the planets are borrowed from Hindu astrology, but the Burmese Rahu and Ketu are different from the Hindu Rahu and Ketu. The Burmese consider them to be distinct and separate planets, whereas Hindu astrology considers them to be either the dragon's head and tails, or ascending and descending nodes. To the Burmese people, Ketu is the king of all planets. As in many other languages, the Burmese name the seven days of their week after the seven planets, but Burmese astrology recognizes an eight-day week, with Wednesday being divided into two days, until 6 p.m. it is Wednesday but after 6 p.m. until midnight it is Rahu's day. The pilgrim, on his way up the steps of the pagoda, buys flowers, candles, colored flags and streamers. These are to be placed at the stupa in a symbolic act of giving, which is an important aspect of Buddhist teaching. There are donation boxes located in various places around the pagoda to receive voluntary offerings which may be given to the pagoda for general purposes. As of December 2017 foreigners are charged a 10,000 chots, approximate 7 US dollars, entrance fee. In 1608 the Portuguese adventurer Felipe de Brito e Nicote, known as Nazinka to the Burmese, plundered the Shwedagon Pagoda. His men took the 300-ton Great Bell of Damazidi, donated in 1485 by King Damazidi. De Brito's intention was to melt the bell down to make cannons, but it fell into the Bago River when he was carrying it across. To this date, it has not been recovered. Two centuries later, the British landed on May 11, 1824 during the First Anglo-Burmese War. They immediately seized and occupied the Shwedagon Pagoda and used it as a fortress until they left two years later. There was pillaging and vandalism and one officer's excuse for digging a tunnel into the depths of the stupa was to find out if it could be used as a gunpowder magazine. The Mahagandha Bell, a 23-ton bronze bell cast in 1779 and donated by King Singguin popularly known as the Singguin Bell, was carried off with the intention to ship it to Kolkata. It met the same fate as the Damazidi Bell and fell into the river. When the British failed in their attempts to recover it, the people offered to help provided it could be restored to the stupa. The British, thinking it would be in vain, agreed, 
upon which divers went in to tie hundreds of bamboo poles underneath the bell and floated it to the surface. There has been much confusion over this bell and the 42-ton Tharawadi Min bell donated in 1841 by Tharawadi Min along with 20 kilograms of gold plating, this massive ornate bell hangs in its pavilion in the northeast corner of the stupa. A different but less plausible version of the account of the Singhwamin bell was given by Lt. J. E. Alexander in 1827. This bell can be seen hung in another pavilion in the northwest of the Pagoda platform. The Second Anglo-Burmese War saw the British reoccupation of the Shwedagon in April 1852, only this time the stupa was to remain under their military control for 77 years, until 1929, although the people were given access to the Paya. The shoe question on the pagoda has always been a sensitive issue to the Burmese people since colonial times. The Burmese people had always removed shoes at all Buddhist pagodas. Hiram Cox, the British envoy to the Burmese court, in 1796, observed the tradition by not visiting the pagoda rather than take off his shoes. However, after the annexation of Lower Burma, European visitors as well as troops posted at the pagoda openly flouted the tradition. Udamaloka publicly confronted a police officer over wearing shoes at the pagoda in 1902. It was not until 1919 that the British authorities finally issued a regulation prohibiting footwear in the precincts of the pagoda. However, they put in an exception that employees of the government on official business were allowed footwear. The regulation and its exception clause moved to stir up the people and played a role in the beginnings of the nationalist movement. Today, no footwear or socks are allowed on the pagoda. In January 1946, General Aung San addressed a mass meeting at the stupa, demanding independence now from the British with a thinly veiled threat of a general strike and uprising. Forty-two years later, on August 26, 1988, his daughter, Aung San Suuki addressed another mass meeting of 500,000 people at the stupa, demanding democracy from the military regime and calling the 8,888 uprising the second struggle for independence. Like us and join us at Extreme Collections for more fun and knowledge.